Hey guys, this is Cody with Cody's Garage. Today, I've got a generator review. I'm gonna get this generator out of the box. I'm gonna show you a little bit about it. We're gonna get it fired up and we're gonna run it through its paces. I'm gonna get you set up a little bit better, but thanks for watching. Today's video is on the Aeryak 4500 PD Tri-Fuel Inverter Generator. The link to this generator will be in the description below, and this video is provided by Aeryak. additional items here like we've got an oil fill bottle the spark plug wrench a spark plug it is a torch f7 rtc And then a 30 amp twist lock adapter to 30 amp TT adapter. And then the generator itself. Looking at the front of the generator here, we can see our control panel. It says a CO switch. Not entirely sure what that means. We've got our 30 amp twist lock adapter right there. Two 110 volt outlets. The light that shows that we have propane or natural gas going through it. Looking at the top of the generator, we've got a nice access door here for the spark plug. It did come with an extra spark plug, but there is also a spark plug in there. I was checking that. I was a little bit concerned that they sent it without a spark plug installed. We can see here <clears throat> that the rated AC output is 120 volts AC as expected. 60 hertz, 3500 watts rated, 4500 watts maximum on gasoline. Propane rated power is 3150, 40, on propane slash natural gas. The rated output is 29.2 amps. It does have a few USB ports on the front here as well. I think it's got the USB-C and a USB-A port right there, as well as the breakers, the plug-in for the natural gas or propane as well. Now let's check to see if there's any oil in it. Since it was shipped to me, it should not have any oil in it. Now at the bottom of this panel, we can see that it's requesting 15 W40 and half a liter of that. 1540 is an interesting oil to be required for this. We will see what we have on the shelf. All right, so we'll check the oil here. And just like I thought, that dipstick is, it's got signs of some oil on there, but it was emptied before it was shipped. Now. This nice little oil bottle that they sent with it doesn't have the tube on the end that would be able to make it 
super nice to be able to tip it and have it go in there. So I grabbed out of my tool chest this, um, this little tube that came with another inverter generator that I've worked on before um, and I managed to reuse it. And all these threads are typically the same when you go into this, this size of engine. I also have um, looked in the owner's manual and found that there's one section here that says 10W30 slash 1540. I have 10W30 on the shelf, so we're gonna go with that because I feel like that's a little bit more normal for small engines. So we're gonna get our 1030 here, pour it into the engine. see oil on the dipstick in a much better place now. So we'll go out and get this started. Now that we've got the initial startup completed on the Ariac 4500, what we're going to do is do a kind of burn-in test where we run it for about an hour, charging the Tesla Model 3 here. And then after that, we will do a little bit of a load test. First, I'm going to show you some of the supplies that I have today to make this test possible. First here is a TT30 to 14R50 adapter. This looks like an RV adapter, but these are actually specific for electric vehicles. I have this in the car just in case I need to charge at a campground or somewhere where there is a uh, 30 amp receptacle to my uh, 14 R50 adapter that I'll show you, or 14 R50 charger. Next is a neutral bonding plug. Generators have a floating ground, I believe, that uh, would otherwise cause an error with the car when I'm charging. This will allow you to work through if you have an RV surge protector, if that gives you an error for a ground error. This will also help you if you need to charge an electric vehicle off of your generator. This is a twist lock 30 amp to TT30 adapter that came with the generator. And then here's my 32 amp Tesla mobile charger. I have the 14 R50 uh, plug on there. And that is what I plug into my garage when I'm charging here with this. Um, but we're going to be using this today so we can get the full 32 amps out of the generator when we do our load test. So let me get you set up a little bit better and we'll get off to the races.
right guys, now that we've done our break-in on this, we can do some comparisons. Now, just comparing the size between the Ariac 4500 and the Power Horse 4500, we can see that the Ariac is actually quite a bit physically smaller. And it is smaller in weight as well. The Ariac is 54 pounds with a full tank of gas. The Power Horse 4500 is actually 99.2 pounds. So this is significantly smaller and puts out the same power. Now, the other thing is that the, the uh, Ariac is significantly smaller than its competition. With the Predator 3500, which is built on the same platform as the Power Horse 4500, that weighs 102 pounds. The Predator 5000 weighs 110 pounds. And then a generator with this kind of newer generation of suitcase high power output generators. One to compare it to is the Genmax 4600, and that is 58.4 pounds. So even in its competition, it is much lighter than generators that are similarly sized. All right, guys. Now I'm gonna go through some of the pros and cons of this Ariac 4500. One of the pros is the weight. I already talked about and compared the weight of this generator to some of the competitive generators in its class. It's pretty lightweight. It does come with a wheel kit um, that you can purchase additionally on Amazon that will make it a little bit easier to move around because at 54 pounds, lifting it up like the briefcase style generator is a little bit much. Next one here is that it is tri-fuel. It is propane and it can be run on propane, it can be run on gasoline, it can be run on natural gas. I didn't have a chance to get it running on natural gas in this video because I don't have a connection at my house that I can tap into for the natural gas connection. I didn't have some of the additional fittings, but it does have all the specs necessary for the natural gas connection on the Amazon page, so check that out. One of the other pros is that it is it does have the ability to do the, the carbon monoxide disable. Now use this at your own risk. Do not run this indoors. Do not run this in a non well ventilated area. Make sure that you run it in a ventilated area, but in the event that that carbon monoxide detector is, is going off and preventing it from running, you'll have the option to shut that off using the button right there on the control panel. People all over the Predator 3500 forums complain about that carbon monoxide detector going off if they have it in a generator shed or tailgating and things like that. So it is a nice feature to be able to shut that off and override that carbon monoxide detection. Now, one of the cons of this generator is that it doesn't have that eco throttle to be able to throttle the engine all the way down or all the way up. If you have a heavy inductive load that you're going to turn on, like a, an RV air conditioner or something like that, sometimes it works well to keep your voltage high by keeping that the generator revved up. This doesn't have that option, but at 4,500 watts, it might not be necessary. And with that, that's the end of this video today. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you to Ariac for providing the generator for this review today. If you guys have any ideas for future videos, be sure to leave a comment below. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Cody with Cody's Garage. We'll see you soon.